Hey, welcome back everyone. It is time for another Red Hot Covered Call video. Well, hey, look, today I have a treat for you. I'm going to answer one of the number one questions I get in my inbox all the time. Hey, John, I bought a stock. I sold the covered call, man, knocking it down. And now the stock has rocketed past my strike price and I don't want my shares taken away. This is one of the biggest fears and one of the biggest problems people have when they write covered calls. I'm gonna share with you a couple trades today uh, where we talk about that, but we're gonna highlight my Redfin trade where I literally wrote a covered call and this thing has rocketed some 20 points higher. We're gonna talk about what I can do if I do anything. See, that's important. I may not want to do something, have my shares taken away, but if I wanted to, let's talk about the process and the risk associated with buying back that option. Now, I also want to give you a quick update on my one stock, one week, $1,000 challenge, where I'm averaging over $1,300 a week. We are absolutely blowing away this 10-week challenge where I was hoping to make $10,000 in 10 weeks. Well, I'm going to show you how we're absolutely killing that challenge, just like I did with UPRO some four and five months ago. And I'm also going to show you one of my weekly stock commentary emails I send to all my premium members, because in this week's email, I'm going to show you a stock that I think is tremendously undervalued. I've got skin in the game. I'm waiting for it to pop. I'm going to show you what I showed my members. So look, if any of this interests you, if any of this excites you, what I want you to do is uh, subscribe to the channel. It's right there and it's free. I come back every single week showing you timely and relevant covered call cash secure put trades just to up your game. And hey, look, if you like this video today, bang that like button. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. Now, a quick update to the one stock, one week, $1,000 challenge using 1,000 shares of DraftKings. You know, this has been an amazing run. And the reason it's amazing, for me anyway, is that I get a chance to use and exercise all of my exit strategies. You know, it's super easy to buy 100 shares of stock, write a covered call, we collect the premium, and whatever happens, happens. What I love about the one week challenge is that I have to use multiple exit strategies not to find myself in a bad spot. And if you remember in my last video update, we talked about how I got in a bad spot and I had an $800 loss. Now I was able to turn that around and mitigate some losses. And I'll tell you what, that is a beautiful thing, man. When you can be under control because of your experience and knowledge, make good decisions. And then it turns out to be a profitable trade. Now, when I bought back that option, taking a hit of some $800, I turned around and was able to write another covered call, mitigating my losses, where I was potentially gonna lose $3,000, ended up losing $300, was able to write a covered call going into this week. Of course, my shares were taken away because DraftKings has rocketed past my strike price. Now, I was able to make a profit on that, but as we get into this week, I've decided instead of buying another 1,000 shares, I'm gonna use the cash secure put. I was able to get for an at the money cash secure put about $1.80 per share for a one week cash secure put at the money. That's damn near $1,800 in a week for which my goal is to make $1,000. You know, if you learn this, right? If you learn this skill, you can generate some serious weekly paychecks. Now, you don't have to go out and buy a thousand shares and you don't have to buy a stock like DraftKings, which is more volatile, but you can use weekly options to uh, generate real income, right? Money that's on the table, money to pay the bills. And I'll tell you what, man, it is empowering when you can do that. And my weekly challenge, I've told you this, use the weekly covered call to enhance your skills. I always tell you to get your education and you get your education through watching the free YouTube videos, talking to some trusted friends that actually trade the market. Hell, email me your questions and I'll answer them. But more important, I need you in the game because then you get your experience. Because once you do a trade, the trade feels different. And I'll tell you, man, you absorb it like a sponge. So with that said, we're doing good with the weekly challenge. We're achieving our goals. And of course, I'm going to do an update next week when this cash secure put hits expiration. 
Now, of course, you can go to my blog spot, cpt-board.blogspot.com. It was there. Go back. I want you to stay in tune to that update because as I just showed you, every single trade, I document it, give you the commentary so you see what my mindset was because part of this game is understanding the mindset. You know, that's, that's very important. You have to understand the mindset. This can be very automatic, but trust me, there is emotions and mindsets Man, you have to have it all together to be successful in this game. Now, what I want to show you before we get to that Redfin trade is my weekly roundup email to my upgraded CTP dashboard premium members. Now, what I do is this, talk about the markets, my feelings about them. Sometimes I love to show a stock that I'm watching, but I always give some flavor as to why I'm watching it. I don't just post it up with no commentary because then you, you as the reader or the viewer, you don't get that sense of what is he thinking here, right? So that's what I wanted to do when I created the weekly roundup email. And uh, as you can see, I talk about one of my common themes where we want to follow the Fed. Ever since 2007 and the real estate crash, it has been very successful to follow the Fed. And what I mean by that is as they keep interest rates suppressed, money's going to flow into the stock market. This is nothing new and I'm not breaking any ground here. Look, when you artificially keep interest rates down, all of those income seekers that would use bond funds to generate monthly income, well, they're not making any monthly income. So what they have to do is they have to get that money in the stock market and buy some great S&P type companies that pay three and 4% in dividend yield. That's why money flows into the stock market every time the Fed comes out and says they're suppressing interest rates. So that's what I love to do. I love to follow the Fed. And since I've been following the Fed, I've had all kinds of success in the stock market because that's what Wall Street does. Now, yes, they, they run them up to sell them off, to run them up to sell them off. Uh, that's another common theme and belief I have because that's what Wall Street does. With that said, it's all about the Fed and the Fed just said that they're gonna keep interest rates down by buying bonds and uh, that's gonna go into 2023. So if history repeats itself, we're going to see a lot of money flowing into the stock market. And I'll tell you what, I've emailed all my members my opinion on that. I actually believe the Dow's going to hit 35,000 early in 2021. But hey, that's to be seen. Nobody pays me for my predictions. Now, quickly, before we move on, Alibaba has been one that I've been watching. I just cannot believe Alibaba has found itself just trading sideways here at about 255, 265, 275. Alibaba is bigger than damn near every trillion dollar company uh, that's on Wall Street right now, including Amazon. And if you look at their profits, if you look at their financials, it would blow your mind that Alibaba is so big. And think of this, there is no competition for Alibaba in China. Amazon does not play in China. Alibaba owns it. And it just intrigues me that this company that's valued at about 700 billion isn't worth the 1.4 trillion that Amazon is worth. And that's what blows my mind. So, so what I've been doing is I have been putting some skin in the game. I have been buying Alibaba every time it dips. Now, uh, I'm on record as saying that I have a position in Alibaba right now with a cost basis of about 260. I believe it should get back to 280. And I'll tell you, once we get there, we could go back to 300 real quick. But one of the things I've noticed with the chart is this. Every time the Bollinger Bands with Alibaba starts to condense, right? We're getting that rubber band effect where there's not many buyers and not many sellers. The Bollinger Band is starting to tighten up, right? Every single time it tightens up, Alibaba breaks out of it. And that's where these arrows are. If you don't know what the Bollinger Bands are, definitely go back to YouTube, watch a couple videos on explaining Bollinger Bands. Every time the Bollinger Bands start to condense, right? And the stock's trading right in that mid-level, it's like winding up a rubber band. It's consolidating. Any good news usually pops it. Any bad news usually sells it off. Now, as you can see with this last one, it popped higher, but then we get all the bad news with Alibaba where they might delist some China stocks on the New York Stock Exchange. You know, with Alibaba, I just don't believe that's going to be the case. And also they had that huge IPO that they put on pause. So for me, I'm just thinking, look, this might be a great opportunity to pick up some shares. So I put some skin in the game. I've been watching it, but keep an eye on Alibaba. Uh, really for the backstory, the backstory intrigues me that Alibaba is bigger, bigger than most all of these trillion dollar companies. And this thing's trading for $700 billion. I look 
look at it this way. Are those trillion dollar stocks gonna come down to Alibaba or is Alibaba gonna go to those trillion dollar stocks? Because I'm telling you what, the market cap on Alibaba being 700 billion, if you're asking me, my opinion, Alibaba is undervalued. And in fact, if you go to Yahoo Finance, you'll see even Yahoo Finance sees Alibaba as being undervalued. Now look, if any of that interests you, go back to cptdashboard.com, click Upgraded Dashboard, and join my membership. All right, so I know the video is getting long and I know somebody out there wants to type into the comments, blah, 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 get to the point. Okay, so here we are. Redfin, if you've been watching my channel, you know about two months ago, I've done some wheels. I've done some wheels on Redfin. Love Redfin. Uh, used a thousand shares on Redfin a couple of times. Made some good money. Well, my most recent thousand share purchase of Redfin actually was a covered call and I didn't have my shares taken away, but I wanted to take the money. I wanted to take the money and put it into a different stock. And that's what I did, but I held back 300 shares. Yes, I held back 300 shares and I told my members, look, I'm going to keep these 300 shares till Redfin gets into the fifties. And when it gets into the fifties, I'm going to go ahead and use these 300 shares and write a couple covered calls. Well, when I did that, little did I know, man, this thing was going to pop. And uh, that's exactly what I did. So my cost basis on Redfin is about 46. All of the premiums I made, I don't consider that cost basis reduction. As you know, I uh, think of that uh, premium as something I spend. So for me, about 46.50 is my true cost basis on this. But with that said, I go ahead and as Redfin starts to move higher, it actually gets above 54. So I write the 55. It's basically a near the money call. I go ahead and do the 30 days. I think I get $3.50 for it. This thing takes off, man. Talk about rocketing past my strike price. Well, the trade's playing out. Now the option that I got paid like $3.50 is now trading for some $20. Uh, usually when that happens, I do not buy the option back. I go ahead and just let the shares go away. We'll get the $55 per share. We'll go ahead and move on. And the reason for that is, adding to my cost basis. So that's what we're going to talk about here because I got some emails from members asking, Hey John, how do you play this now? So I want to talk about how this will unfold. So the setup is simple. The $55 strike, uh, that means they're going to take my shares away from me at 55. They paid me $3 and 50 cents. My max profit on this trade is uh, 58 50. That's all right. I'm happy with that. I made max profit. You know the deal. How many times can you say in your life you made max profit on a stock trade? That's how I see things. So for many, they don't understand why I'm not upset now that Redfin has rocketed higher. That's okay. Just understand I've been in this game long enough to know this kind of thing happened. That's what we do. When we write a cover call, we limit our upside. You have to be good with it. Now the question is, what options, no pun, what options do I have here if I want to take this trade off the board or alleviate the obligation? It's simple. The option that I got paid $3.50 for is now trading for some $22. Now, if I want to buy this option back, right? I sold the right, not the obligation. I sold the right for somebody to take my shares at 55. Well, as long as they don't execute on me, I have the opportunity to buy back the option. Now, because it's rocketed past the strike price, I'm going to have to pay because remember an option has two elements to it, real money or what they call intrinsic value and time value. So when you look at an option price, if the stock is not in the money or it's not above 55 in this case, the entire option price is time value. That's the cost that that would be your profit. If you're a covered call seller, that would be your cost if you're buying the option. Okay. So now that the stock is some $22 above the strike price, what happens is the time value portion starts to leak out of it. Okay. It becomes real money. The option becomes almost all intrinsic value. So the real question now is how much time value do we give back? See, real money is real money. The stock's trading at 76. This is going to represent 55 plus 76. That's real money. We alleviate the obligation. We now own a stock that's trading at 76. We could sell it at 76. But see, here's the problem. And this is what people don't connect the dots. We paid for that stock move when we bought back the option for 22X. 
It's that time value portion that's the key here. That's what you're taking away from the 350. So let's do some simple math. I'm gonna keep the numbers straight, okay? Let's imagine that the option is $22.10 and it's $22 above the strike price, okay? Notice, $22 is all intrinsic value. The option is trading for $22.10. The 10 cents is the time value portion. So if I elect to buy back this option, alleviating the obligation, allowing me to keep the shares, I'm gonna pay $22.10. $22 of that is real money in the stock, okay? That 10 cents is the time value. That's the cost that I have to reduce from my 350. So now I have $3.40 of profit. I paid the $22. But see, now I own a $76 stock. But understand, that's not $22 of profit, right? I make nothing more than $55. Okay? So with that said, they X each other out. Meaning, if I pay the $22, I then have a stock that's trading for $76. I make no more money than 55. So if I sold the shares immediately, right? I paid the 22. I then sell the shares and make the 22. You see how they X each other out. Now the question is how much time value did I pay? Well, I'm paying 10 cents. So reduce your original profit by 10 cents. And that's my true profit on this trade. So here's my biggest red flag when stocks get this far above the strike price. So if I alleviate the obligation, I pay the $22, $22 to alleviate the obligation. My cost basis is not 46 anymore. Or if I had bought the shares at 55, it's not 55 anymore. I now own a stock for which I've added $22 of cost basis. So in this trade that I just explained, let's just say to keep the number straight, my new cost basis is in fact 76. Well, this would be great. I'd go ahead and sell a covered call. And, and in fact, if we go over to the uh, options chain, I could see that I can get about $3.70. $3.70 for an 80, okay? Well, I would make the $3.70. Then I would make from $76 to 80. So that's about $7.50. And that sounds great. Here's the problem. See that run up right there? That run up right there is overheated. This is the major red flag for me. Unless there was some serious positive news here, this thing is probably gonna retrace some of this, right? I used this example years ago when I went ahead and bought Eli Lilly. I sold the out of the money strike. Eli Lilly rocketed higher. And in fact, Mr. Buy, Buy, Buy guy was saying it was going to a hundred bucks. I got scared, I got worried. I wanted that hundred dollar gain. I went ahead and bought the option back. I absorbed all of the cost basis. I'm holding the shares. What ends up happening? Eli Lilly goes from about $90 down to 70 bucks. I am left with that entire cost basis ad plus a stock that's now trading for 70 bucks. So in John's world, I do not buy back my options when they've gotten this hot. I just let my shares go. Look, what I'm gonna do is take the money, the $55 plus the $3.50, a total of 58 50. And I'm going to use that on another stock. This thing has made me max profit. I'm going to move on. Now, if I did, if I did alleviate the obligation, pay $22.10 for this option so I could have the shares at 76, I better have a plan. And that plan might be to write this out of the money 80 uh, covered call for a month. But I'm telling you, you're adding $22 of cost basis. To me, that's a red flag. I'm going to let this trade play out. Because remember, I still have a little bit of time. This thing might peel off as Wall Street takes some profits. So I might be able to buy this thing back if I really don't want to give up my share. I could buy it back cheaper, still adding to my cost basis, but not as much. It's one of those things where you really have to have the mindset of, I made max profit, we move on. But more importantly, if I'm going to buy this back because I'm panicked to lose my shares, I better have a plan. Now look, if any of that interests you, head over to ctpdashboard.com. I got a one free month offer for you. Look, I always try to up people's game. When I put together the membership, I always said my mission is to always up people's game through my experiences, through my ideas, through the tools that I've created. And it's always fun for me. I love this game. I love having success. And I also love hearing your stories when you are having success too. Hey, look, I'm going to leave it right there. If you liked anything you heard today and you want to be a part of it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Bang that like button. It lets me know you like what I'm doing. Be safe, be healthy, but more important, be lucky. Until next time, may all your covered calls be profitable.